The most fascinating and important attraction in the city of Bath are the Roman Baths, ancient ruins from 2,000 years ago. The center of Bath was built on top of the original Roman Baths on the site of a natural hot spring, an ancient geological feature that has been bubbling for millennia. A comprehensive museum has been built on the site incorporating many of the original Roman structures along with thousands of artifacts in a fascinating display that reveals how very civilized they were 2,000 years ago. The museum's main feature is the large bathing pool, which originally had a roof but now has an outdoor terrace that you can walk all the way around. Be sure to enjoy the different angles looking into the pool, across the rooftops of the city, and at the tower of the adjacent Bath Abbey. The pool with its lead lining and paving around it are original Roman, as are most of the objects inside the museum. The statues and columns around the terrace look ancient Roman, but are Victorian additions, as is the building that surrounds the bath. The square stone structures around the edge of the pool were originally the foundation for the big pillars that held up the ceramic roof. From reconstructions in the museum, we can see that it was a covered bathhouse. The circular bath was a separate pool called the Frigidarium with cold water that they would plunge into after steaming in their hot bath and their warm bath. It's a typical feature of the Roman bath complex, but this one is especially large, as are all the other pools in the bath. The great bath was so large that it functioned as a swimming pool, which was most unusual. The Romans constructed baths in all their main settlements and went through the effort of building furnaces to heat the air and water. But here the heating was all done naturally deep in the earth with steaming 117 degree water that still gushes out of the ground at the enormous rate of about one half million gallons per day. This huge volume and natural heating were the reasons for this bath's construction. Although they controlled all of England, this was the only place that had a natural hot spring, so it was extremely valuable to them. They really loved taking a hot bath. From the outside bath area, you walk inside to the museum exhibits, which are presented in a very educational and clear and modern way. Many of the original stone pavings and structures are in their original location, and numerous display cases show off the artifacts, which include coins, household implements, jewelry, and they have some very innovative video displays that go with the artifacts that recreate life of the ancient Romans. The most important single treasure is this gilded bronze head of the god Sulis Minerva, who represents a combination of a Celtic and Roman gods, the most complete gilded bronze Roman piece in all of England. Roman conquerors arrived in the Bath area in 43 AD and remained until 410 AD. And during that time, things were generally peaceful under the Roman rule. The Romans were clever occupiers who allowed the local people to continue traditional customs and religions and even adopting some of the local gods. Roman engineers built an extensive network of roads, fortresses, and spas to transport the goods and support their advanced lifestyle. Of course, the unfortunate Britons were forced to do most of the physical work, but the country benefited in many ways from Roman innovations and control. When the Roman Empire collapsed, the soldiers picked up their spears and suddenly left Britain creating a power vacuum that was soon filled by invading Anglo-Saxon Germanic tribes who were not at all interested in the hot baths. The thermal springs fell into ruin until the Normans in the 12th century built the King's Bath, some of which is visible in the structures we see today. Archaeological excavations later in the 19th century discovered more of the ancient Roman pools along with many artifacts that had been very well preserved Careful steps were taken to preserve these valuable historic treasures, and they're now beautifully displayed in the museum. One of the advanced pieces of engineering found here was the heating system called the hypocaust. This went underneath the floors, and the brick columns elevated the floors with airspace that was heated by the natural hot spring. 
keeping the floors and the building nice and warm. There are some guides working at the museum, some of them in costume, who can provide some explanations. I'm a slave, yeah. So, and what do you do as a slave? What's your role, your job? I spend most of my time looking after my mistress, Lady Flavia. Oh, okay. Cooking, cleaning? No, no cooking. No, she's got a whole bunch of other slaves to do that. Yeah, yeah there's definitely a slave hierarchy. Yeah. And so you've got your makeup kit. White chalk powder for the face. Red ochre mm -hmm. used for rouge. <laughs> pleasure. Thank you, slave. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. A thorough visit of the Bath and Museum takes nearly two hours if you want to read all of the information posted and listen to the audio guide, or you could rush through in one hour. The Roman Bath has an excellent website that has many of the videos on display in the museum, along with deep information about Romans in Britain and the museum itself. Next door, built on top of part of the original baths, you'll find the elegant pump room. First opened in 1706 and rebuilt in the 1790s. Taking the waters was a main reason why Bath became such a fashionable resort during the 18th century. The pump room is still a fashionable gathering place where people come to drink the sulfur-related mineral water that is oozed up out of the ground in hopes it will cure some ailments. You can sit in the restaurant for tea or a full meal. Usually there's live music creating a relaxed, elegant atmosphere. The Bath Abbey towers over the city. It's still the tallest building in the town center. It's the third church built on this location. The first was a small stone church built by the Saxons, important in British history because it is where Edgar, the first king of all England, was crowned in 973. Later, a Norman abbey was constructed around the year 1100 and finally replaced by the church we see today. The abbey is sometimes called the Lantern of the West because nearly 60% of the walls are stained glass. If you have any questions or comments about Bath, type it in down below and I'll be happy to answer and respond. All travel suggestions, questions, and comments are very welcome. This video was photographed on a recent trip with many more episodes coming to our YouTube channel. We upload a new travel movie every week, so if you want to be informed, please subscribe. We have more movies about Bath on our YouTube channel where you'll also find more than a thousand other travel movies, mostly about Europe, but also Asia, South America, and North America. Have a look. And you can also find the movies listed on our website, tourvideos.com. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we upload new movies every week, so you'll be notified. Thanks for watching.